So this is the video that I wish someone had made and that I'd seen before I bought my first Aero Garden. There's so much that they don't tell you or that's hard to find out and I wanted to put it all in one video so it's easy to find. So if you're getting ready to buy your first Aero Garden and you're feeling overwhelmed and confused, don't worry, I've got you. We'll go through it all today. This is definitely not going to be a setup video. It's just what I wish I'd known before I got one of these bad boys. And basically, that's the first thing I want to talk about, the models. There are so many models now. There are the Sprouts, which are the three pod ones. There are the Harvest, which come in different orientations. This one is the Harvest Slim, which has six pods, all of the Harvests do. There's the Bounty that has nine. And then you get into the big boys, the Arrow Garden Farms. I have the Arrow Garden Farm Plus, which has 24 growing holes. And there is now an Aero Garden Farm 12, which is just a smaller one. So out of these, how do you know which model to buy? And that's really gonna depend on what you want to do with it. They all look different, but the main thing I think that is important to consider is the grow height. Some of them are gonna be a lot shorter in grow height. The Aero Garden Sprout is only about 10 inches, whereas you can go to the Farm XL and that's gonna go all the way up to about 36 inches of grow height. For me, that's actually probably the more important thing because you can't change it. You've only got as much height as you have and you can prune and there's different things that you can do, but if you know you're gonna be wanting to grow bigger things like peppers and tomatoes, then I would always encourage you to go with one that has the biggest height. The Bounty has a decent height on it. I think it's about two feet, put it on the screen. If you wanna grow big, then you definitely want one of the farms. If your goal is to grow leafy greens and herbs, then you can definitely get away with one of the smaller units. I have two sprouts, the one harvest, I have my Arrow Garden Farm, and I love all of them for different reasons. Leafy greens, short things are gonna grow perfectly well in a sprout, a harvest, a bounty. So one of the most important things I wish I'd known is that you shouldn't plant all the holes that are available. If you have a unit like the Sprout or has three holes and then you would think you could put three things in, generally that's gonna lead to overcrowding. So as an example, if I'm growing peppers or tomatoes in my Arrow Garden farm, I'm probably only putting one in, maybe two, even though there's 12 holes on each side. So it allows the plant to spread out and to have a better yield. You can put in more, but generally your plants are going to suffer. And that was the one thing I did when I got my very first Arrow Garden. It was a harvest and there were six holes and it came with six preceded pods and I put them all in. And then it was a mess and definitely not a great experience. It's a good idea to know kind of what you want to be growing, like what your main goals are, and then you can plan on what unit is going to be best for you. Another thing is the preceded pods. Generally, when you buy your unit, they are going to come with this. I think they all do, but I'm not 100% sure. Generally, it's going to be leafy greens, something like that. When I got my farm, I did have some choice and I was able to get some of the tomatoes and some of the bigger things. You don't have to use these. You can, and they're great, especially when you're getting started. And another thing that's really good to know is they do have a really good guarantee. And if they don't sprout, you can contact them and I believe their customer support will send you replacements. Because sometimes they get jostled about and the seeds will fall out and that's maybe why they don't grow. Though I tend to save them and then replant something else in them later. What I really like are the grow anything pods. Basically, you just get a bulk thing of the little sponges and I have a bulk thing of the baskets and then you can put them in and you can use any seeds that you want. I am an heirloom seed snob. I absolutely love my heirloom seeds. I like to just have more variety than what Aero Garden makes available. Though they have a lot of good stuff, I just like to have a bit more freedom to plant whatever I want. I will put a link down below to some of my favorite seed companies where I get a bunch of my seeds from. And I'm gonna go ahead and put links down in the description for any of the products that I'm mentioning. Now, another thing to know is that while you can't grow everything, you can grow an awful lot in one of these units. I've grown herbs, peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, cucumbers, melons even. I'll put a link up to where I grew the melons hydroponically. There's so much stuff you can grow. I've grown peas and beans. It's really you're limited by grow height, but also a bit by your imagination, which takes me into my other point that you can push the boundaries of what you can grow if you go ahead and leverage dwarf plants. I did a video on this. I'll link it up above where I grew a whole bunch of dwarf plants in my rise garden, but it doesn't matter what unit you're using. The 
dwarf varieties are going to let you push the boundaries a bit more. I did grow regular peas in the Arrow Garden and I just found it completely unruly, but I got a dwarf variety, the Tom Thumb Pea, and they only grow about nine inches tall. And I got quite a few uh, peas off of it and they were great. And it didn't take over the whole unit. Jumping off from that, there's a lot of accessories that are there for the Arrow Garden as well. They have trellises. Um, my farm came with one. There's other add-ons and things, grow bowls. There's things like this water jug, which honestly, if you are going to get one Arrow Garden branded product, I would get this one. I use it for literally everything. I fill up the cat's water dishes with it. I fill up all of my units. I water my plants. I use this thing probably more than anything else that I bought from them. But there's a whole bunch of other products that you can get. One that I find a little bit more gimmicky that I probably wish I hadn't bought was the pollinator. It's got a little bee. It vibrates to help pollinate the eggplants, peppers, and tomatoes. Now, one thing that they don't necessarily mention is that tomatoes and peppers and eggplants are self-pollinating. So you don't actually need to get something like this. Now, that said, it will help to increase your yields, but you're gonna get tomatoes even if you don't go out and buy this. When I got it, it was one of the first things I bought everything Arrow Garden. Over the years, I've learned that you don't need to do that. Another thing that's really important are hole covers. So these are the Arrow Garden branded hole covers. You do not need to get these ones. I just wanted to try them out, so I picked some up. I like them, they fit in the holes perfectly. I've seen people use golf balls or pretty much anything just to cover the holes. And you're gonna wanna cover any of the holes that you are not using. And if you are not planting all the holes, which is better not to, then you're gonna need something to cover the holes. And why? In a hydroponic system, when you have light and water and nutrients, there is a very good chance that you are gonna get algae. By using the hole covers, we pretty much take the light out of the equation as much as we can, and it reduces the chance of getting algae. Probably gonna get it at some point, and that's okay, but we still wanna do what we can to try and prevent it. Another really good thing you can get if you wanna up your arrow garden growing game is a little tiny oscillating fan. It doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be super powerful. We don't want it to be super powerful. We just want to have it on basically so that it gives the breeze. It, it helps to make the seedlings stronger as they're growing and just to help with the air circulation. This is another handy thing that I love. This is from Arrow Garden Farm and this is what I use to start. I'm pretty sure it's 85 seedlings. I grow both indoors and outdoors and one of the things I love to do in my Arrow Gardens is start all of my seedlings. Things grow faster in a hydroponic of environment, especially at the beginning. So it's nice to get the jump start, especially if I've started my seedlings a little too late and I will get them all started in there and then I will transplant them outside and let them continue growing. I'm pretty sure that they make one of these for just about every unit. Even my Arrow Garden Sprout has one and that can start 15 seedlings. So one of the things that I did for years was I used the Arrow Garden nutrients and that was all I used. And I have grown very well, thank you very much, just using those nutrients. But I didn't even think to try anything else. Whereas now I'm testing out some of this Fox Farm nutrients. There are all different types of nutrients out there. The one thing I would recommend is you make sure you're using a hydroponic one. You don't wanna be using any that might have some grit and it might damage your pump. So that's just one thing to consider. But branch out, try some different things. See if something works better for you or if the Arrow Garden is all you have, don't worry about it, but you don't have to use just their nutrients. Another thing you may wanna consider is adding in some CalMag. So this is really going to benefit tomatoes and I've heard people use it for lettuce as well. It's just going to give some extra nutrients. I tend to put it in when I am adding in my regular nutrients. Some people I've heard say that it makes the tomatoes taste better. At some point, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side experiment using one with no CalMag and some with CalMag to see if I can taste the difference. I can't can't confirm or deny that because I haven't noticed. I did grow delicious tomatoes without any CalMag, but it is an extra nutrient that you can provide to them. Cleaning is another thing we need to talk about. The bigger units are harder to clean. They're gonna take a lot more time. The Arrow Garden Farm takes the longest of any of my units to clean. Most of the units have a grow deck that comes apart, which is a pain in the butt to clean. My favorite one to clean is the Arrow Garden Sprout because
because it's just so very simple. It is going to take time to do the cleaning, which is something you don't have to do if you're growing outdoors in the garden. So we need to talk about the lights. The lights on these units are hella bright. I keep all of mine in my grow room so they're not disturbing me when I'm trying to sleep. If you were living in a very open concept where your bedroom is kind of open to the whole space, they are going to be very, very bright and it may, and it is annoying for some people. You can make little things to block the light, to go around them, to reflect the light back in, but they are bright. So it's something that's good to know. People are often surprised how much light they give off when they plug them in for the first time, which is another point. For most of the units, when you plug them in the first time, that is going to be their on time. The lights will stay on for 16 hours and then go off for eight. If you want to change the time that the lights come on, you can always unplug them when it's the time you want them to come on and plug back in. Some of them will have a light on, light off time. My farm does, so I can actually program it. I don't need to unplug it. Another thing that could sway you from one model to another is uh, some of the models have a vacation mode, which is just going to give you some peace of mind if you are going away. And the vacation mode is pretty much just going to lower the water usage and is there on most of the harvest, bounty, and farm models. On most of the models, there's typically going to be two lights or indicators that are going to flash. One is going to be for the low water level, which is going to just prompt you to, to top it up. I like to try and stay on top of it. As the plants grow, they're going to definitely use more water. So the rate at which you put water in at the beginning is going to be very different than when you have full grown plants, how often you're going to need to top it up. The other light or prompt that is usually going to be there is going to be to add the nutrients. Typically, this is just on a 14 day cycle. The light just goes off to remind you. If you have some of the more Wi-Fi models, they can send notifications to your phone to let you know that it is time to add the nutrients, but it's pretty much just going off every 14 days. The last point that I want to make is that Aero Garden's not the only choice. Now I have four Aero Gardens and counting, but there are other options out there that you may want to consider. There's Rise Garden. I have a family Rise Garden. I also have a personal Rise Garden. There are Click and Grows. I just got a big one of that that I still need to set up. There's Tower Gardens, and it seems like there's new ones coming out every day, either on Kickstarter or just new companies getting into the hydroponic game. So there's lots and lots of different options. So just make sure you're doing your research. If you're set on Aero Garden, then just consider what you want to grow before you go out and get a model. It's kind of cool that there are so many different options. I like trying different ones and I like different ones for different reasons. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my comparison between my Aero Garden Farm and my Family Rise Garden, where I pit the two against each other to see which one is the one unit that I would recommend.